All right, so you probably have seen quite a lot of uh, LP the Hyper based DDR3 memories on my videos, uh, especially when it comes to uh, 775 or 1366 overclocking, as uh, LP the Hyper based DDR3 memories can usually reach the best possible timings at the uh, at the frequencies that the uh, those platforms can usually run. So the best possible uh, X48 775 motherboards can reach up to like 2150 or 2200 megahertz in terms of memory frequency and LP the hyper based DDR3 memories like Corsair Dominator GDX2 or Dominator GT 2000 Cas7 they can do like 675 or even 665 timings at that frequency level especially if you put the memories uh, cold so uh, that's the reason why those are best on that plat on that platform and uh, the end result is pretty much the same on X58, so uh, you can usually do the best possible performance at 2150 to 2200 megahertz. And again, the uh, LP the hyper based memories can do like 676 or 686, like on my 920 video, or even 666 if you run the memories uh, on LN2. So uh, that's uh, the uh, reason for LP the hypers there. But when it comes to the more like newer DDR3 platforms like I original Ivy Bridge, original Haswell, even uh, uh, Ivy Bridge E or even Sandy Bridge E and original Sandy Bridge, the uh, power chip based DDR3 memories are often the best in the end. And the whole like the power chips or PSC memories are like the pinnacle of whole DDR3 era because they can run insanely tight. Uh, timing configurations at extremely high frequencies so they can do like on original Haswell they can do 2800 plus or even 2900 plus frequencies with 6106 or 696 21 common rate time uh, common rate one timings and even in some tests like XTU or similar some some of the craziest kits can do even CAS 5 at 2800 plus and I think the highest validation I ever saw was like 3000 plus with CAS 5 so that is extremely insane result it even beats many of the like the first DDR4 uh, kits that were released so that really blows the door uh, in terms of memory performance so I thought about making a little like demo about what the best possible DDR or like what the best possible power based power chip based DDR3 memories can do on air and what you should be looking at as different milestones if you are trying to bin uh, these memories for benchmarking purposes so uh, I tested many kits myself back then so I had many uh, G Skill Pi series kits Mac Extreme kits uh, Patriot Viper 2 Sector 5 based kits and G Skill Trident etc and uh, the best possible uh, power chip based sticks for me in the end were the uh, Patriot Viper 2 Sector 5 2500 megahertz Cas9 sticks. So the uh, here's the original heat spreader. So the uh, original bin was 2500 megahertz with 9, 11, 9, 27 at 1.65 volts. So uh, the funny thing about this particular bin is that it is totally, uh, it's from a totally different planet than any other power chip based bin from Patriot. I even had a few of those uh, 2400 Cas9 uh, sticks and they were really really bad compared to the 2500 ones. So uh, these are the best power chip based sticks that I still have or that I, ed that I have ever had. So these have the uh, custom heat spreaders by Barks. So you can find his uh, uh, online page and web store on sites like Facebook. So it's called Bark Store uh, on Facebook. He makes these uh, custom heat spreaders and many custom IHS, etc. And even like pots and uh, single stage units. These are the best custom heat spreaders for DDR or like for memory and especially uh, dual sided memory like the power chip sticks. Because these can really get tight on the uh, stick so the issue with many uh, custom heat spreaders is that they are they often end up being quite loose so if, if when you just tighten them together you can even just pull the stick out 
from the uh, heat spreader. So the uh, these ones have really nice pressure and also that they are copper. So you can uh, control the temperature easier if you happen to get a kit that has really annoying cold bag. So uh, and these also have a hole for your thermocouple on the actual heat spreader, as uh, if you run. Uh, these sticks uh, on LM2, it's very wise to uh, monitor the temperature from the actual sticks, not from the pot, because uh, it's quite hard to uh, mount the RAM pot on memory sticks, so that the uh, memory sticks will get even temperature. So uh, there's a bit of like practice, so you can get the coldest possible temperature on the stick. So when I first time ran memories on LM2, the end result was that the other stick was at minus 190. And the other stick was at like minus 130 because of bad contact. And if you just measure the temperature from the actual pot, you will not know this uh, issue uh, with the temperature, and then you will not get the best possible end result. So if you run power chips on LM2, I would always recommend you measure the temperature from the actual stick, not from the pot. So just saying. So. Uh, uh, I also had quite good cheese skill pie kit from uh, a very famous memory overclocker, if not the best memory overclocker ever. Uh, he's called Tapaka or Sam.OCX. Uh, it was a selected cheese skill pie combination, one stick from two different bins. That was quite close to these, at least on uh, air quality. So uh, they maxed uh, they maxed out at around like 2780 on Haswell with 8, 12, 8 timing so that's quite good so uh, when it comes to uh, power chip binning on air cooling uh, you are looking at two things you are of course you are testing like what is the maximum frequency you can do at uh, CAS 8 timings and then you are also binning for the best possible uh, TRCD limit so TRCD is the middle one of the three main timings so uh, for example uh, value of 12 in my example 8128. So uh, when it comes to power chip based memories, TRCD can only be uh, tightened by getting the temperature colder. So you cannot make that timing tighter by increasing the uh, memory voltage. So uh, when it comes to power chips, the uh, TRCD value scales like a bit over 1 MHz per each uh, degree uh, in Celsius. So uh, if, you get the, if you get the memory temperature down from 20 degrees to 19 degrees, you can usually get 1 MHz higher memory frequency with exactly the same TRCD value. So, uh, you are then, so you are bidding two different factors. So you are testing what kind of TRCD limits the, the actual stick has and how high it can do with, let's say, 8, 12, 8 timings or similar. So... Uh, People used to uh, bin voltage requirement at 2666 8128 uh, con memory configuration. Uh, I personally use the uh, uh, power, chip or power chip profile on ASRock Z97 OC formula for easy to compare results. So uh, a good kit will do that profile with uh, 1.85 volts or less. Uh, or when he would even say that a good kit will pass that profile with less than 1.9 volts but the best kit the best sticks that i ever saw could do that profile at around like 1.8 volts but the uh, thing that i would look more I, I would look for more is that how high you can actually get the memories on air cooling so uh, uh, if you can do 2800 megahertz with 8128 8 or 8138 8 timings for me it's more important than passing 2666 profile at fairly low voltage. There are kits out there that can do the 2666 milestone at really nice voltage, but then they don't go any further than 2700 megahertz, for example. There are many kits like this. So uh, I wouldn't just test the 2666 profile. Of course, it's a nice, uh, like, easy to compare level, but I would always test for the absolute max what the actual stick or kit can do. My best stick, so one of these two here, it can do 2840 megahertz on air cooling with 8138. And the both both of these sticks here can do TRCD value of 12 at 2800 megahertz with uh, 28 
20 degrees room temperature and also TRCD level of 11 at 2666. So when it comes to TRCD limit, the best possible sticks can do value of 11 at, well at least at 2600 MHz and the very best can do it at 2666 in normal room temperature and a value of 12 at 2800 MHz. So if you can do those uh, uh, those milestones, then uh, you can usually do TRCD value of 9 on LN2 when the sticks are running full pot temperatures. So there's that. So I will show you how I run these at those mentioned configurations on the Z97 OC formula with a 4770K CPU uh, in this video. So if you've been power chips, I would always recommend you use a Haswell system because Haswell can get the memories much higher than original Iverbridge and the end results are easier to compare. You cannot compare Haswell results with Iverbridge results because Iverbridge cannot do as high uh, frequencies with that, with that kind of timings as Haswell. So uh, I would just recommend you get a really nice Haswell board with a good CPU like Z97 OC Formula, Z97X SOC4 from Gigabyte or the LN2 version or Maximus 7 Impact. The voltage scaling, so the power chips usually stop scaling uh, at around like 1.96 to 1.98 volts on air cooling. If you go to 2 volts or even beyond that, it usually just destroys the whole stability. So you, you will be, your memory will become really unstable. So uh, I would not push any higher voltage than 1.98 uh, on air cooling with these uh, memories. So uh, I think without further ado, I will get the system uh, set up and I will then I will show you how I manage to uh, get these uh, levels on just air cooling. Oh, 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 oh,